morning good morning bgi online and in the house today this is the day the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it um as we get closer and closer to the the birth of jesus which is the reason why we're celebrating in this season um there's something a devotional i like to share with you because most people that are going through right now, a lot of people are going through the loss of loved ones. Um, this may not be a happy time for them. Um, also, people may be sick and not feeling well. And then just loss in general. We've had weather issues across our country that we've seen loss in, in lives as well as destruction in homes and all kinds of things that everybody's going through. So I just want to share this devotional with you. Um, I shared this on our prayer line when we had our prayer call uh, about a, a couple of weeks ago, and I feel like someone needs to hear this today. John 16, 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. The truth is life we are living can be hard. In today's scripture, Jesus reminds us of exactly that. He tells us in the world, you will have trouble. He didn't say you might have trouble, nor did he say you will never have trouble. No, he said you will have trouble. The beautiful part of this scripture is that he uh, then tells us that we can have peace in this troubled world, we can take heart and be encouraged that he has overcome the trouble in this world. He knows that life is painful, but he didn't leave us empty handed. He left us with his peace. You can be sad, you can be angry, you can continue to act surprised, especially about everything that goes in this world today. You can be confused, but you don't have a reason to despair. Even if life at times is tragic and dark, do not despair. In the midst of the trouble and when life is hard, his peace is there. Rest in his wonderful assurance. Dear Lord, thank you that you have left us with the Holy Spirit to com comfort us in times of trouble. Thank you, Father, that we can run to you at any time and find peace this world could never provide. We ask that you remind us that when trouble comes, we don't have to walk it alone and walk in despair. For in you, we can find peace, Lord. In you, we can find comfort. Life is hard, and you remind us that in this life, there will be trouble, Father. Thank you for the truth of your word, Father, that we can stand on when life seems too hard. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for us so that the world of trouble won't last for eternity. Father God, although life is hard, we can walk in victory with you. We pray that you will make our way peaceful and fill us with encouragement and hope, Father. Give us a heart of wisdom to lean on you during times of trouble and not seek things of this world, Father, that leave us feeling empty. When life gets too hard, Father, please remind us of your promise. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May I bring your attention to the screen. Mary, my betrothed, you have the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen, and the sweetest smile. Don't be afraid. I'm the Lord's servant. Help us! Please! Lady, I believe your son is the promised king of his people. What is his name? His name is Jesus.
your baby boy with gifts I to the blind man. Peter, where is my son? Know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand. Didn't you know? the face of God, of Mary, did you know? Mm. My son. Mary, did you know? Ooh. Ooh. The blind will see
wanted to share a little bit of Christmas cheer with you all this morning, the way we started our program. So because he was born on Christmas Day and the things we go through, he's the victory. So I just, God gave it to my heart to sing this today to end of all fellowship after we just seen what we've seen.
I'm glad today. I'm satisfied today. I'm full of joy today because the joy of the Lord is my strength, y'all. Hallelujah. He's a good God. He's a mighty God. He is worthy of all of our praise. He is such a personal God. Hallelujah. And this is a time that we can interact with him in a personal way that we can come to him and talk to him and tell him all about it and listen to him what he has to say to us so right now if you desire come to the altar come to the altar come on let's meet our God Let's petition him. Let's thank him. Let's glorify him. Let's let him know how much we appreciate him. Let's let him know how much we love him on today. See, that's what I want to do. I just want to let him know that I love you, God. Because you love me so much. You took a wretch. See, you all see me now that I've been regenerated, now that I've been made a new creature, but I was a rich undone. I was in sin. I was dirty. I was filthy. I was beyond salvation. I was headed for hell. But God, hallelujah, but God, the Jesus that we heard him say, Mary, did you know that your baby boy would heal the nations? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would bring salvation? Mary, did you know? <laughs> I'm so glad he came. And in this season of celebration, the mass of our Christ, we come and we just honor him on today. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we magnify you, we glorify you, we lift you up because you are holy and worthy of all of our praise. There is none like you in heaven or in earth, none, God. So Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you said that we could come boldly unto the throne of grace to receive mercy in the time of need and God this is a time of need father there are so many things that are going on in this land in this country in this world in this universe God we need you father for the sickness God we need you for the the violence we need you for uh, the dying we need you for the hurricanes we need you for everything God we need you for our breath we need you for water we need you God and we are so grateful that you are there you are there you said that we can have a confidence that as we ask anything, as we speak to you, you said that we could come nigh unto you. We thank you, Father. God, we ask that on this day that you would look into our hearts and our minds, God. There are those that are bereaved. There are those that are sick. There are those that are depressed. There are those that are tired. But God, you are the balm of Gilead, your water, your salvation, your everything that we need. And so pour into your people on today. God, help us. Help us, God. As we reach out to you, Father, we know that you never leave us or forsake us. We know that you are always there, God. And so we lay our lives before you. We surrender. Ah, oh God, we surrender. We surrender all to you. All to you, our blessed Savior. We surrender everything. And we place it in your capable hands on today. Father, we thank you for these and every blessing, everything that you've done. We thank you for it. 
and let the people of God say, amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Glory to God. This is a good day in the kingdom of the Lord God. Hallelujah. And so we are going to spend a little time before you on this morning. It's so good to see everyone on this morning, my sisters and brothers. I thank God for those of you that I cannot see, but I know that you are there. Amen, amen. I know that you are joining us virtually by uh, our website, or you might be looking at this in playback, but anyway, or either way that it is, it's still a blessing to be in the house of the Lord on today. I, I'm old school. I give honor to my pastor, Apostle Vince McCaskill, my first lady, Lady Rhonda, and to the elders of the church, Elder Jacqueline Washington, my sister, my baby sister who tried to be the big girl, <laughs> and to each of the saints in the house, hallelujah, I bless God. Thank you for the deacons and everyone that's here today. Um, I pray that the Lord allow me to not hold you long. Uh, I just have a word from the Lord on today, and uh, I pray that I decrease, that the Lord may increase, that the word will go forth with power. Uh, it, uh, the word of God is alive and powerful. You, amen? Come on, y'all going to talk to me a little bit. See, I, I'm a teacher. I, I, students got to respond a little bit. So God's word is alive, and it's what we need in our lives on today. So as we were celebrating today, uh, this season, we're at a time and a season that when we get to the end of the year, you know, it's customary that we begin to look back on the year. As Lady Rhonda said, we're finishing up 2021, and we're we have a hope and an expectation to see 2022. So what we do during these times is we take time and we begin to look back at the year that has gone by. We, we begin to look and, and to see what have we done. You know, we make goals and we have uh, uh, things that we want to do. And, and so we begin to look back and we determine, have we done the things that we said that we were gonna do? What's our progress? Uh, have we made progress? Uh, have we had setbacks or have we had regrets? Uh, what's going on with us? We look back and that's okay. That's okay, that's a good thing to do. We wanna know how we've done but I want us to remember that in our lives, we have purpose, we have assignments, we have destinies, and we have destinations. And in all of these things, we're running in a race. Amen? We're running in a race. And I want you to know that Today, the race is not over, but we're running in a race, and our objective is to finish strong. We want to finish strong. So we begin to look at what is the next? What's the next? What's the next step? What's the next uh, assignment? What's the next level? What's the next risk that I have to take? What is the next thing that I have to do? Because my goal is to finish in this race and to finish strong. Paul told us that in 
2 Timothy 4 and 7, he admonishes us that we do want to finish. He says, I've fought the good fight and I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. So Paul lets us know that that's what we want to do as well. Amen? We want to finish and finish strong. Praise God. But on today, we're actually going to be talking about uh, a different person. Uh, the Bible is for our learning, our understanding, uh, guidance. It's a road map for us. And so we begin to look in the word of God and we see the things that God has done and the people that God has used. And on today, we're going to be talking about our brother, the patriarch, Nehemiah. We want to talk about Nehemiah on today. Nehemiah, our uh, scripture uh, that we are going to be looking at is Nehemiah 6 and 3. And Nehemiah, we're, we're going to talk about him, but I just want to read you the scripture. He says, so I sent messengers to them with this reply. I am carrying on a great project. In other words, I'm doing good work and cannot go down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and go down to you? So Nehemiah has sent an answer to some people that have been bothering him. But let me give you the background story. I know some of these Bible study and Sunday school scholars already know this story, but Nehemiah was living in Persia and he was the cupbearer of the king. He was a high official. But living in Persia, he heard that his hometown, Jerusalem, the holy city of God, was really in ruins that the walls of the city had been broken down. They were rubble, and the gates had been burned. And so he was discouraged by that, and he wanted to do something. You know, we have to understand that when you want to do something that's good, God put that desire in your heart. So what did Nehemiah do? Once he heard about that, Nehemiah did something that we don't like. He fasted. Uh-oh, stop. Wait. And that where you don't eat? Yeah. But Nehemiah had compassion. It, he was sad because he knew, okay, he's the king's cupbearer. So where do you think he's living? What? He's living with the king in the palace. See, I told y'all there's some Bible scholars here at BGI. Hallelujah. He's living with the king in the palace. So when he hears about God's place being in ruin, his heart was sad. So, but he, rather than rushing to see what he could do, he fasted and he prayed. He sought God for the answer because see, once we realize that God is the one that puts the desire in your heart, then we'll know that God has the recipe. God's got the roadmap. God's got the pattern. So Nehemiah was smart. So that's one thing, come on, keep it in mind. He was smart. He wanted to do something, but he fasted and he prayed and he got the plan from God. Amen. Praise God. So what he did was he went and he asked the king all about, uh, you know, could he go there and, and would he, uh, you know, supply him with the lumber and all of that. Everything that he asked king uh, Assert, um, Zertex, Zertex, 
Aster Zertix. That's his name. <laughs> Everything he asked him for, the king gave him because God gave him favor because he took the time to find out God's plan. But I want you to know, even when you are doing God's work, you may be in that race by yourself. But when Nehemiah decided to listen to God, God went on and put him in the race. You see, God, even though Nehemiah was the king's cupbearer, he was still just a man. And a lot of times we feel like, well, you know, you're talking about Nehemiah or you're talking about David or whatever. But guess what? I, I have five brothers and they all say every man put on his pants the same way, one leg. Come on, brothers at a time. Well, I know I got some brothers, one leg at a time. So I want to encourage you that when God gives you an assignment or when you realize that you're in the race, that God has a purpose or a destiny for you, don't just say, well, I, you know, I'm just a regular, ordinary person. God likes to use ordinary people to do extraordinary things. And see, I have a witness for that. I do, I do have a witness in James verse five, uh, chapter five and verse 17. It says that Elijah was a human being even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. So that was just a man. That James is saying he was just a man, but he prayed. So don't think because I'm ordinary that God can't use me. Matter of fact, that's a good reason to know that God can use you because you realize that it's nothing you can do anyway. It's got to be God that's going to do this. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So once Nehemiah realized that he was in the race, then, like I say, you have to realize that when you're doing the work of God, when you're doing a good work, when you're doing a good thing, you may have to do it all by yourself. And even if you're not doing it by yourself, I want to let you know. Because, see, I don't want you to be surprised. See, some people say, well, if I had known, if, I had, if somebody had told me. No, I'm going to tell you, you're going to have some enemies when you're working for God. <laughs> you're going to have some enemies when you're working for God. Yep. So when we look at Nehemiah, chapter 2 and verse 10. Ah. Verse 10. Maybe I didn't put it up there. I have it. It says, when Sinballat, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite, official heard about this. What's the this? The work that Nehemiah was beginning to do and in the process of doing, they were very much disturbed that someone had come to promote the welfare of the Israelites. Now look at that. Isn't that twisted and messed up? Here are the cities in ruins and someone comes to build it up, but you got these two and others that say, wait, I'm disturbed by this. They're disturbed because of the good work, because they came to promote the welfare. Come on. The U.S. got something like that in our preamble. Uh-huh. To promote the welfare. Welfare, let me break that down, because, you know, we take words and we mess them up, 
or we take words and we think that there is only one meaning, or we take words and we add a negativism to it. Welfare means the well-being of the people. The well-being to, to make sure, because see, this city, Jerusalem, uh, back in those days, a city's prosperity and eminence was uh, shown by its protection. They had walled cities. When, when you read in the Bible about a walled city, you know that that's a, a prosperous place. But God's city, Jerusalem, they had torn down the walls and they had burned up the gates. But when they came to build up and to help the people, somebody got mad. Somebody got mad. And I'm going to tell you that Sanballat and Tobiah did a whole lot of stuff. I'm not going to go through the whole book of Nehemiah, but when you go through it, you just go chapter by chapter by chapter. Listening to them talk bad, uh, well, what they, they think they build in this little wall. Uh, I mean, they, they were trying to throw what the young people say, throwing shade. They build in this little wall. They say, if a fox was to run across their wall, their wall would fall down. Oh, they, they were mean. They were ugly. They were talking about them. Oh, who are these people trying to do something? They don't have any might. They don't have any money. They threw all the shade that they could to discourage God's people. But I want you to know that when God has something for you to do, there's not anyone or anything that can prevent you from doing what God has you to do. So, Nehemiah, I, I want to put it in the context of running a race. Nehemiah was running a race. He, he was the boss. God made him the, uh, uh, not the CEO, but what, the project manager. Yeah. God made him the project manager. So, he was telling the people all the things to do. And so, I want to encourage you where I said that sometimes you have to go by yourself. But you know what? When you're doing God's work and when the people saw that Sanballat and Tobiah were really trying to discourage them, they looked to see how Nehemiah was going to react. And when they saw that Nehemiah wasn't putting up with that mess, like he told them, I'm doing a good work. I, I, I don't have time for y'all. I, I, I got to keep working. Then what happened was, if you look in the third chapter, of Nehemiah, it begins to talk about all the people that were doing the work, the priest. Now, you know, uh, from what I understand, the priest didn't do that, they didn't do that hard work. No, I'm, I'm taking care of the temple, but the priests were working. They had a perfumer, nail and nails. Now, what he know about nail and a nail? probably putting them in crooked and pulling them back out or whatever, but everyone was working. Okay, here's one thing. Now, this is the Old Testament. Come on, y'all. It talks about the women, some daughters that were working. See, women weren't really held in high esteem in those days, but everyone was taking a part in this great work that God was doing. See, sometimes when you're doing something, you need a team behind you. You know, uh, if you think about a race car driver, you know, he's got what they call a pit crew. And, and from my understanding, I don't really follow all this stuff, and I always wonder why God always give me these weird illustrations about stuff that I don't know nothing about. But my understanding is the pit crew is pretty important. My understanding is the pit crew is some really, really spectacular folk. Now, I have seen them. The guy drive up in the thing, and they jump out, and, boy, they hike that car up so fast, and next thing you know, all the tires are off, and they put new tires on, and, I, and I'm, I'm like, oh, my God. And they do it in minutes. 
Nobody fell over the other one or whatever. Nobody hit somebody upside the head with a wrench. They did it all. But they're all doing it to get that driver back out on the race field. He had a team. And so Nehemiah had a team of people working with him. And so I want to encourage you that God will give you a team if he sees that you are willing to do the work. If he sees that you are going to be faithful, if he sees that you're following the roadmap, the pattern, if you're in line and doing the things that you're supposed to be doing, amen, amen, praise God. So he had, uh, I wanted to make mention, uh, Pastor brought this up early and I was in a different place, Nehemiah 2 and 18. What he did was he told the people the vision. That sounds familiar to me because I, I have been blessed to be under visionaries and still am. We're under a wonderful visionary. What they do is they, it, we call it cast the vision. Throw the vision out for us to grab hold of. And that's happening with us even now. More news to come. Apostles gonna share and share and share. I can't hold it. You know how they say, like a, a bad refrigerator. Can't hold nothing. <laughs> Praise God. But I'm going to hold it. I see Pastor back there saying, close that mouth. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he shared the vision. And see, that's what we have to have. We have to have a visionary, someone who took the time to uh, fast and pray and get the details the plan so in 18 he said Nehemiah said I also told them about the gracious hand of my God on me and what the king had said to me and this is what the people said they replied let us start building so they began this good work and come on y'all I'm coming on down in the home stretch for you all uh, that actually brings me to my point one. I only have three points on today because I'm talking about finishing strong. We got to finish and we got to finish strong. But point one in finishing strong is that you've got to start now. Come on, somebody. You got to start right now. See, when I was preparing for this message, um, I was on YouTube, and it, it was God. It's, it's always God, y'all. It was God. And I began to look at a video from the Olympics, and they were running the 1,500-meter race. Now, that race is one where, you know, you got to run around the track a few times before you cross the finish line. And there was this young lady that was the favored person to win that race because she had a wonderful strategy that she had put into place to win races in the past. And so when they started the race, because you know, you gotta run around the track maybe four times. I, I told you I don't know this stuff, so, oh, praise God, amen. <laughs> so her strategy was, she was at the back. All the other people ran out, they were going fast, but she was at the back. And so the commentator started talking, saying yes, Stefan has this strategy. She's the favorite one. They said she's going to take it easy and she's going to run this race and she's going to take her time because what she would do is save her energy while everybody else was running fast as they could trying to stay up front. But something happened in the last lap when it was the one where they put the tape up this time, 
it was going to be the end. She was running, and she knew she had to begin to build up her speed, and she was running, and there was this other young lady. These were all the good contenders. This young lady fell down on the track. And Stefan tried to jump over her, but she couldn't, and she fell. I'm going to come back and give you all the end of that story in a minute. My first point is start now. Start now. Because we've got to look at what I was saying at the beginning. Sometimes you stumble, and sometimes you fall down, and sometimes you stop. But you know what? You got to get up and get back in the race. You got to get up and get back in the race. And that's what I'm saying to someone now. Whatever your dream is, whatever your desires, whatever God has placed in you, that business idea, that, that desire to own a home, that desire to start a family, that desire to be in ministry, that desire to whatever it is that God has given you, whatever made you stop, the disappointment, the rejection, the, 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 the failures, the, uh, whatever it is that made you stumble and made you fall, you got to get back up. You got to get back up. You got to get back up and get back in the race. That brings me to point two. Point two, stay focused. Stay focused, God is on your side. Stay focused, God is on your side. Let me go back to Nehemiah. Nehemiah in the fourth chapter and the 14th verse says, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord. Come on. Remember the Lord. See, sometimes we need to stop right there and remember God. We got to remember what God has already done. We've got to remember that he is God. Remember. And then beyond that, we've got to remember who we are. Come on, Mufasa. What did he tell Simba? Remember who you are. We've got to remember who we are. We're the children of the Most High King. We're kings and we're priests unto him. We're more than conquerors. Hallelujah. We're overcomers. But let me try to get through this scripture. It says, remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your families, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. You got to fight. You got to run. You got to run. You got to run in this race. So now let me finish telling you the story of Miss Safan, the Olympian. Remember I said the run in front of her fell. Safan tried to jump over her, but she wasn't able to jump over her and she fell down. But I'm telling you, go and look it up. She fell down. But when she fell, she went into a roll. She rolled up and she started running. And, the, and you could hear the commentator saying, oh no, oh, that's so bad, she's gonna lose. That's terrible, what a horrible accident. You know, she had a decision. She could have just laid there because it was a terrible accident. But I'm gonna tell you, both women got up. Both women, the one that she fell over and her. Stefan rolled and got up and started running. And then the excitement happened. She was at the back because they had fallen. Everybody ran, <laughs> left them. But she started running. And she started running. And all of that energy and all that strategy that she had had all along of I'm going to save mine to the end, you could hear the commentators, she's overtaken so-and-so. She's past this one. Oh, my God, she's in third place. What? We can't believe it. Who knows what happened? Stefan won that race. 
<laughs> from a fall, she ran the race because she didn't give up and she didn't give in. But I want us also to know that we have to understand that when we're running this race, I, I, I had to use that example because here's my third point. Finish strong. Finish strong because we're in it to win it, y'all. We're in it to run it. The Bible says that the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to the one who endures to the very end, the one who finishes. We've got to finish our race. So I want to just tell you one last thing, and I am done. We finish and we start all the time. Every moment that you wake up, you're starting. Remember I said start now. And then you finish. But we have to understand that in the race that we're in, it's like the race that Stefan was in. We're running a lap. So you might have finished that lap, but you got to keep running. You hadn't finished the race. See, Paul told us a long time ago that when you finish the race, God calls you on home. You depart. So we have to understand that in this race that we're running, we start. Every time we wake up, we're starting. And we finish. And we're going to finish strong. You're only in a lap. 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 But we're going to finish strong. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name, we're going to finish strong. Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you for your word on today. I thank you, God, that I pray that your people have heard your voice. I pray that their hearts are open unto you, God, and for what you're saying to them, God, that you have encouraged someone to know that, yes, you want them. You want them, you want them, you want them. God wants you and that they're able, God, to do exceedingly abundantly everything that you have placed in their hands. Father, as they lean and trust and depend on you. Oh God, we thank you now. Thank you, Father, for how you have touch the heart of those who have may, may have strayed away from you, may, may have uh, been discouraged, may have felt that I don't know what to do and I don't know who to turn to, but we turn to you on today. God, we thank you that the devil is rebuked on today. Hallelujah, and that your people have victory. God, I thank you. Thank you, God, for encouraging us to keep on keeping on and reminding us that we're in this race to win this race and that we're going to finish strong. Hallelujah. So I would say on today, if there is anyone, anyone, that this message touched you. It made you stop and it made you think. It made you realize that I need God. I, I need a Savior in my life. I can't do anything without God. If you know that, no matter how hard you try, no matter how much money you have, no matter how poor you are, no matter what kind of car you drive, no matter what type of house you live in, we need God. You need God. You need God. And we thank you that 
because he sent his son Jesus because God loved us so much he loved us with an everlasting love that while we were yet sinners he sent Christ to die for us and so if you need a savior in your life today open up your heart open up your heart the Bible says if you will confess your sin believe that Jesus is the Son of God that he died for your sins the Bible says if you believe this and you confess it then you are saved and so we thank God hallelujah do it today don't wait don't wait because tomorrow's not promised to any of us. But receive God in your heart on today and thank God for everything that he has done. And so we rejoice, come on, rejoice, hallelujah. Because I believe someone has come into the kingdom today. And the Bible says that the angels rejoice when but one come into the kingdom so God we magnify you and we thank you on today thank you for your peace and your love and your joy we honor your name and we give you glory hallelujah to God thank you Jesus praise your holy name for the Lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth always always endures Praise God. So I see our path apostle has come up and he is going to take us forward. He's going to, uh, I know, do the offering and uh, close for us on today. Praise God, man of God. Praise be to God. Let's give him a round of applause. Now what she didn't know, teamwork. She couldn't see the screen behind her. And as she was talking about the race, the race was behind her. Y'all saw that, right? That's, that's your pastor got some skills, except when it got to the end and it went to the commercial. But God is good. I want to share something with you all. I, I was going to wait, but uh, she kind of sparked me to share. You know, we talked about over the last couple of weeks, the type of ministry we want to be. Uh, and I have some exciting news because we've already begun that process. We blessed some ministries. Uh, we have poured into some ministries, and boy, I tell you, the smile on their faces. But I want to move past that piece. What I shared with you all a couple of weeks ago about the type of ministry that, that God has really placed on my heart is a ministry in action. I call it a ministry of philanthropy. Uh, that's what I've been in. That's what I've been doing really these last 10 years. And finding efforts that impact women and children. Uh, efforts that affect our community and get behind the people or the efforts with our resources and our time to make a difference. So I've been working on a project in the Whitehaven community. What we've learned is our kids who are coming out of high school in the Whitehaven area, but just in general throughout the city, when they go to college, if they want to go into a field of STEM, which is where really all the jobs are really, the middle-class jobs are. When they go into a STEM lab at the college level, they're 40 years behind. They've never had any exposure in high school to STEM, a STEM lab, all of the things that you would, would encounter, um, the stuff is old. And so I've been working on a project for the last four years and you know, kind of just taking the back seat. But the other day I pulled together a meeting with the president of the Chamber of Commerce from Memphis, the um, city council members, county commissioners. We are pretty close to building a building near Whitehaven, on the Whitehaven campus. That's about $6.5 million. We raised about $4 million to do this. And as I sat around the table with the principal of Whitehaven High School, because there's other high schools in Whitehaven that will benefit, but Whitehaven High School, Dr. Hunter and Councilwoman Patrice Robinson and 
Commissioner Eddie Jones. Eddie Jones talked about someone he knew who went to school in Memphis, graduated at the top of their class, but when they went to college, they struggled because they didn't have the access to that. Then Vincent Hunter, his two children, graduated high in their class, but when they went to college, they struggled in the lab. They struggled. They rebounded, but, but they were... One young person said, there was someone who made a 21 on a, a 22 on the ACT. I made a 31 and I was struggling. They were smarter than me. It wasn't that they were smarter. They just were exposed to the stuff. Patrice Robinson shared the same thing. And I committed our effort to sow $10,000 over the next two years into building the building, which would get us 20,000 because there's a matching gift. That's like $400 a month. That's how you do philanthropy. You don't just write a check. That's what most folks do. Because I want us to make an impact. Can you imagine kids coming out of high school prepared, going into college not behind, not getting discouraged and hopeless, and finishing strong and being able to come back to their communities, gainfully employed, middle-class salaries, whatever that looks like. And then they're able to pour into their kids. That's ministry. That's just one thing. There's so much more. So you can, we haven't announced it publicly because we want, well, heck, I just announced it publicly. But there will be a press conference down the road with others who are coming to finish out the 1.5 million that's needed to get to there. But we are part of that effort as a ministry. And for our people who are in the field of science, medical, they're going to need you at that school. They're going to need you Hillcrest and Fairly and, some, and even Westwood because they will be able to utilize those labs. It's a 10,000 square foot facility that will have eight labs, a robotics lab, all of the things. And the University of Memphis has gotten behind it and they're going to build out the program so that our kids will be able to come uh, and, and learn and go into something and not feel like they're inadequate. Have you ever had that feeling like you were inadequate? You hear those voices in your head? We're not inadequate. We just need people to believe in our kids. That's just one thing that we're doing. We've already done some other stuff for four or five ministries, and we will do a whole lot more. But that's what we're about. So today, this is the opportunity for you to give. You remember, we said we don't want to pour all of our resources into a building that we said we did not need. We want to pour our resources into the lives of people or efforts or movements that impact women and children. Now, I'm not just the person who likes to talk about it. I want to do it. You can cash up your contribution to dollar sign BGI Fellowship. For those of you online, cash up dollar sign BGI Fellowship. You can also text to give 901-244-4688. And you can give online at bygodinspired.org. The Word of God says in 2 Corinthians 9, 6, and 7, basically just be cheerful in what you give. He who sows sparingly will reap sparingly, but he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully, for God loves a cheerful giver. That's all God wants you to do is to, when he tells you, he, he puts it inside of you, you know, you just move to do something. Don't let nobody press you. Don't let nobody force you tell you you're going to hell if you do not give give it because God has moved you and you're happy to release amen that's the word for today finish strong finish strong one of the things we we said we we finish strong in here but then at the end of this month we're going to share with you what we're going to be doing where we're going to be how we're going to do it you'll know you'll have it in detail And I'm just very excited. Now, for all of the folks 
and everybody's not here today, but those of you, uh, I'll just let's see. The rights. Have you had a chance to look at your portfolio for Samina? Isn't it nice? It's very, very nice. This family, I like to highlight some of our folks. This family started the BGI 529 Faith Forward College Savings Plan two years ago. Piece by piece by piece by piece by piece. This is where we put 10% of what you give to the ministry. That's, I want to do more because I think now I'm, I'm going to ask some folks if we can increase that number, right? But they are well on their way. And Samina's only, what, six, six years old? Eight now. Oh, my God. It's growing. Pastor Cheryl is doing it now. You're seeing it. Even Nathan. Doesn't have kids yet, but he says, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have a wife and I'm gonna have kids. He started one. Deacon Greg and his beautiful wife Yolanda, they started one for Jeremiah. Jeremiah Thornton, grandchild. And you've seen it grow piece by piece. See, this is what I want to. Jackie Washington and Cliff, you've seen it piece by piece by piece. So this ministry wants to do more of that. Give our kids hope, a future. And so now we'll have a little bit more resources to do more of that, help people. And man, that just makes you feel good. Have you ever felt when you gave something? Cliff is one of the biggest, um, has one of the biggest hearts. You go out to a restaurant with Cliff, you, 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 you can't beat him to your wallet. Like in other words, his wallet is already out, ready to pay for it. And, and it's a competition because I'm, like, I'm going to beat him up. <laughs> he already, here you go, I got it. The reason Cliff does that is not because he wants to be prideful, because it's nothing like giving. It's, it, it's, it's a high. It, it's, and you never come down from it. The other day, we were in a restaurant at Longhorn, and we were sitting around eating, six of us getting ready to, to pay for it, and, and an angel, one of the holiday angels, came out and paid for it for us. Now, you know what we ended up doing? We said, we're going to pay it for it. We found somebody else in the restaurant. It, it, it's just a wonderful thing, folks. So I just wanted to encourage you on today that ministry is outside these four walls. And we won't forsake in the assembly of believers. That is the word for the day. Finish strong. What do we do? We, we stay focused. We finish strong. Stay focused. Stay focused. All minds clear? Did, did anyone get communion last week? How many of you want communion today? It says as often as we come together, let us even, it's not just for Sunday, folks. It's often. How many of you want to do communion today? All right. I have Pastor Cheryl pass it out. We did it last week. I'm going to do it today too. Communion is about a relationship. It's about an intimacy. It's about consuming all of Jesus. He came together with his disciples on that day and he told them, he said, my body is going to be broken for you. He, he said, as often as we come together, let us remember what his sacrifice is. As often as we come together, it's just not first Sunday, folks. As often. Sometimes, you know, you should do it in your house. Now, he said there came a point in time the Apostle Paul had to deal with some foolishness. People started having parties, started leaving people out. This is supposed to be about unity. Started leaving people out, folks. It's in the, the book of Corinthians. And, you know, the apostle has to always straighten things out. And he said, look, y'all. Cheryl over here, too. He said, look, y'all. If you hungry, eat at home. But when you do the Lord's Supper, you do it together. And so he straightened them out on that. And then Paul also said, if any of you have issues with your neighbor, let me get you to do this for me. If anyone has issues with 
their neighbor, or you have anything in your heart that's sin. He said, before you publicly do something that says that you're consuming all of Jesus, resolve that matter in your heart, the ought that you might have against somebody, unforgiveness, bitterness, whatever it is, before you publicly state through your action that I'm all in for Jesus, resolve it. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to resolve it while we're trying to resolve me being able to, to partake of the Lord's Supper with you. I'll give you 30 seconds. And Jesus came together with his disciples on that night and he said, this is my body, which will be broken for you. Let us eat. This is my blood, which will be shared for you, shed for you. Let us drink. This is the blood that heals. This is the blood that covers. This is the same blood that's in you now. To God be the glory. All minds clear. We have something to say. Come on up. So, um, some of you, like Pastor Cheryl and, and, and Elder Jackie, they, they know I have my, my worship time that I, that I get in. And last night when I was, uh, God brought me to <clears throat> things to worship with today, he sent me to, Mary, did you know? And, uh, but what was so powerful about it and the ones that were here in the beginning of service today, what was so powerful about it was when I was praying and worshiping in him last night for today, he brought not only the song, but he brought it with video of just how what Jesus Christ went through. And you all know the story of the Bible that's been shown on TV and it comes around every Easter and so forth. And whoever put this video together just did such an awesome job and it just touched my heart. I couldn't stop crying. And so I asked Pastor V where he rolled this video today and it was at the beginning of our service. And so I asked him to re-show it again for those of you who missed it. And I followed by singing Silent Night. But just... See. Pay attention to the screen. And the sweetest smile. Don't be afraid. I'm the Lord's servant. Help us! Please! Lady, I believe your son is the promised king of his people. What is his name? His name is Jesus. Mary, did you know that your baby one day walk on water Mary did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters did you know that your baby boy Baptize me. has come to make you new Mary, and this here. child
you all have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We hope to see you all back here next Sunday um, after uh, Christmas. Amen. Praise God. Uh, let's everyone stand and um, I would just like um, my gorgeous sister in the back to come forward miss warner leonard it is her birthday and uh, a few days ago uh it was also minister lorraine chapman's birthday her birthday is the same day as my son on the 16th so lorraine we hope you're listening but this lady is so gorgeous to me she is so sweet and you know she shared her testimony uh last week or whenever and talked about depression and I mean I, I'm just like no I, she is so light <laughs> you know God said that we're going to be the light of the world and even when the enemy I will say to you my sister today happy birthday to you and even when the enemy was trying to cover your light it was still shining through it was still shining through and you shine so bright on today. I love you so much. She is so sweet. Uh, and you know, this is the way that we're supposed to feel about one another. Everyone is wonderful and I'm not gonna hold you any longer. So all minds are clear. Uh, I do know. And so Father God, we thank you for this day and for your word. We thank you for the blessings. We thank you for what we felt, seen and heard on this day. Thank you for Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we know that he's not a baby, but he's a full-grown Jesus that's living on the inside of us. And God, we bless your name. We ask that you would give us traveling grace as we leave this place, but never your presence. And let us go out as lights into this dark world and proclaim your gospel and your blessings over your people and over our cities in jesus name amen and amen go in peace everyone praise god is showing this again lady Rhonda let me know that uh, Jasmine is in this choir uh, singing so you'll see her there is a shot a real good shot of her in here uh, so we're proud of our jazzy girl amen <laughs> 